loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for being so gracious to us. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. We give you thanks, God, for all your many blessings. Thank you for keeping our mind, our hearts, our feet. Thank you in the midst of a storm. We find peace. And Lord, those that don't have peace, give them the heart and the mind to come towards you. A mind, the will, the desire to be saved. Look on every household, God. You know the need, the prayer, the cry, the situation, the circumstances. And God, your touch will make the difference. We ask him for a mighty move from you. Bring healing, wholeness, deliverance, restoration, your power, your anointing, your grace, your confidence. Whatever the need may be, there is someone that's seeking you. They're asking questions, and you are the answer. Thank you, Lord. Sing your word today. Bring deliverance today. Bring healing today. Somebody needs a breakthrough. They've been in a rut. They've been depressed and despondent. Bring deliverance, God, in Jesus' name. Your word is health. Your word is healing. Your word is strength. And through your word today, feel the need in Jesus' name. The one that's saved, the one that's sliding back, God. Bring them back. Draw them to the foot of the cross. In the name of Jesus, break the yoke. Undo the heavy burden. Set the captive free. In Jesus' name. No! 
back in the house. Somebody ought to scream!
for shall abow, he shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. I read to you hearing Psalm 61, 1 through 7 first. The word of the Lord is blessed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. I feel God in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. You know, when you try to live for him each and every day, yeah. when you get in his presence, you yeah. shouldn't take long.
Hold out your hand, everybody. So come on, sweethearts. You can stand down front right there. Be 
very sure your anchor holds and grips that solid, that solid rock. That rock is Jesus. He is the one. That rock is Jesus. God's only son. Thank you, Jesus. Be very sure. Be very sure. What you gonna do? That's your anchor hold. And grips the solid, the solid rock. There's another verse. In times like these, we need the Bible. I've heard other verses sung, but this is the real one. In times like these, oh, don't you be idle. Be very sure. Be very sure. And grips the solid, that solid rock. Let me see if you know that rock is Jesus. He is the one. That rock is Jesus. Oh my God. God's only son. So what you gonna be man?
purge in the church at Thessalonica. He says, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. We have no shortage of men and women who we can pattern our lives after as we seek to please God. I'm here to tell you right now, there's folk out in the street, they're not going to teach you how to live for God. If you want to learn how to live for God, you say, well, Bishop, there's some folk in the church that ain't living right. Well, the Bible tells you to mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. You ought to have sense enough at this time and at this age of maturity to figure out who's living it and who ain't. Folk that's lying and telling stories and all that kind of stuff, they're not living it. Folk that's stealing, tricking and all that kind of stuff, they're not living it. Folk that's doing all these other crazy things. I don't care what church they go to. I don't care what board they serve on. They're on their way to a devil's hell if they don't get it right. But there's somebody in the church that you ought to be able to point to and say, I believe that sister is the living for God. And then don't you look for nothing wrong. Don't you look for nothing out of order. Don't you look for nothing out of sorts. If you don't see it to you, it don't exist. I know I'm not talking to Let me preach over here. Because I found out for some of us, we hear stuff, but we really don't know it to be true. So as long as it's only what you heard, but not what you can prove, then you go on what you see. And if I see somebody living right and I don't see anything else out of them, then I'm not going to let anybody else come to me and tell me some foolishness. Because all I see is holiness. And I don't need anybody distracting me at this time. Matter of fact, I've got to question the motive of the person who needed to tell me something about somebody else. Because usually it's just called deflection. They want you to look at that person so you don't see what they're doing. But I believe there's somebody in this church that's trying to live holy. I didn't say you get it right 168 hours a week. I didn't say you get it right seven days a week. I didn't say you get it right 24 hours a day. But you're trying to do it. You're trying. You're doing everything within your power and under the grace of God to live for God. If I got a witness and if I got anybody in here that's trying to live it, why don't you raise hands and say, I'm trying to live it. <laughs> My God, I'm almost done. <laughs> So God's guarantee, here's God's guarantee. Verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willingly more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things. In number one, it's impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who has fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. If God said it, he's going to do it. Oh my God. Let me, can, I, can I stop here for a moment and deal with something? Because some of you are operating in fear. And you're wondering whether you should or shouldn't. I don't know if I should. I don't want to. And all that kind of thing. But let me ask you a simple question here. I asked my daughter over there. I asked her a question this week. I said, have you received everything that God has promised you? And she said to me, no, Bishop, I have not. I said, then a vaccination shot ain't going to kill you before God blesses you. I'm not talking to anybody else over here that's afraid. I don't know if I should take it. If God has not finished blessing you, then you know he ain't going to let no shot take you out. He's got more for you than he's promised you. And the Bible said it is impossible for him to lie. So that means I'm not going to die from a vaccine because God has promised me. Oh, my. He's promised me some great things. So all I got to say is go get shot and live on to see what God has in store for you. And let me tell you something, just because things around you have not become notified doesn't mean that God hasn't blessed you. Because God promised me some money. Now my bank account has not given me notice yet. <laughs> but it's coming because what? God said. God said it. And if God said it, he said he is immutable. I can't lie. I can't change the word that I put out. I said I was going to do it. Okay, maybe, maybe I got 
three people. I don't think I have four, but maybe three that God promised you healing. If he promised you healing, you ought to shout glory. I said only three. I, y'all know that? Listen, I, He promised. So I don't care what I feel like on Monday. God promised me. Tuesday got a headache, backache, foot ache, toe ache. But God promised. Blood pressure up on Wednesday. But God promised. So I'm like David. I shall live and not die. To see the glory of the Lord. So I found out in this word that we need an anchor. And he said an anchor of the soul. And when you look up the Greek words of anchor and soul here, you'll find that soul is suke. It's not the soma. It's the suke, the spirit of me. I need something to keep my spirit anchored. When folks say what they say to me and do what they do to me, I need to remain steadfast, unmovable, always about in the work of the Lord for you know so I can get some help back there that your labor is not in vain in the Lord you got to make up your mind I don't care what distractions come I'm going to remain focused steadfast can't move me I'm locked in my soul has been anchored in the Lord though the storm Rise, go the sea billow, roll, go the wind and waves blow. I will remain anchored. I will remain focused. I will remain locked in. I will remain constant. I will remain faithful. I will remain. get closer y'all. I'm going to put it back on. Because I don't believe it's time to take them off yet. But there's some stuff going on behind these masks. And I got one that says behind this mask is a praiser. And I want to let you know that listen they're going to come off after a while. But make sure both of them come off. The one that you've been wearing before they mandated us. Because <laughs> some of us had masks on way before we put these on. But I'm here to tell you. Just because I'm smiling. Huh? Doesn't mean everything is alright. And just, just because I'm frowning. Doesn't mean that everything is all wrong. But I will say this. Just because things don't seem like it, it's just they don't seem like it. But God promised me. And when he promised me, I asked him something in addition to that. I said, Lord, let me be healthy enough to spend it and enjoy it. I ain't going to get no help here. See, some of y'all want to go on a cruise ship. Some of us want to own the ship. See, I want the kind of car that I have to be chauffeured in. Y'all know I'm not the prosperity preacher. I believe if you pay your tithe, God will bless you. But there's coming a time in your life where I believe you ought to have the things that you desire and the things that you want. If you're living for God, because hmm? some stuff we're not taking to heaven, so we're going to have to enjoy it down here, right? Messes up that. But he promised me. And some of these things, when they get settled in your life, it's going to anchor your very spirit. Not having to worry about your bill money. 
Yes. Not having to worry about whether the enough is going to be in the account to take care of it. Yes. Writing a check and not even checking your bank account. Oh, yes. Some of you still have to do that. Yes. Talk to three of y'all. Yes. I told I, I talk all the priests about five people or something. Yes. <laughs> I don't care how many people I don't preach about five of y'all. Because some folk, I don't care what you say, they're not going to. They're not. They ain't, they ain't talking to me. And your accountant is negative right now. He ain't saying nothing. Man. Listen, when you check in your bank account every day, you need a blessing. You need some help. You need an anchor. You need an anchor. When you're worried about whether you're going to be coming home in the dark or not, you need an anchor. When you're worried if you're going to have enough gas just to make it to the net, you need an anchor. Huh? When you're wondering whether the food is going to be enough for the week, you need an anchor. Huh? You need an anchor. And what he says to Abraham, he says, in blessing, I will bless thee. Now, I, I, I'm hearing something today. Nothing different, but just hearing something. In other words, God will say to Abraham, I'm going to be blessing people next week. And while I'm going to be blessing people next week, I'm going to bless you. That's what he means when he said, in blessing, I'm going to bless thee. In other words, I'm going to be doing it. And your name just got added to the list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let, me, let me step over here. Yeah. I don't know if they believe it over there. But yeah. in blessing, yeah. your name just got added. Yeah. Since I'm going to be doing something, let me put your name. Yeah. Since I'm going to be doing it. Yeah. Since I'm going to be healing next week, then let me put your name on the list. on Tuesday, so you want your name on the list? I, I, I'm going to open some doors on Thursday. Did you want me to add your name to the list? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. So, God, since you're going to be blessed, bless me. And whoever can receive that, you need to receive it with this immutability statement yeah. uh -huh. that it is impossible for God to lie. Yeah. 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 And I asked the question in my reading one day, why is it that God can't lie? Because there's nothing that he can't do. Because most of us, if we were to lie, it would be about something that we say we could do that we really can't. You, you already know you can't do it, but you said you could. But there's nothing God can't do. So whenever he says it, he knows he can do it. And he has his word to back him up. Nothing shall fail thee. There's not a hair that falls from your head that God don't know about. The fake hair or real hair. There's not one that falls from your head that God don't know about. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that something? Amen. That's how in tune he is with his word and what he's going to do for us. So I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do for me. And so just let me encourage you. That's what helped to get me in that chair. Because I feel like if I can live any ways longer with the vaccination, then I might as well go ahead and get it. I'm going to get my next one next week. Not this week, but next week. And I'll be done. Because I want to live on to see what God has in store for me. And I don't need to be somewhere all broke down and can't make it. I want to enjoy what God has. That's why I'm praying for those of you who need healing in your body. There's, there's a life and then there's enjoyment in life. Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 There's a lot of rich folk in hospitals that can't enjoy their wealth. But I pray not just for wealth, but health. I, 
Wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in, in health, even as your soul prospereth. So there are good things in store. God has great things in store for you. I'm pointing at the camera now. For you. Just make sure your soul is anchored. Amen. See, when your soul is anchored, he can depend on you. Amen. See, when he blessed Abraham, Abraham didn't leave him. God's got to be able to trust you after he blessed you. Amen. You don't let the blessings go to your head so much that you're not even seen in this house anymore. When you look in the word of God, all the great men that were blessed with wealth, they were worshipers. Job was a worshiper. I believe the Bible says he was the richest man in the East. But he was a worshiper. Abraham was a worshiper. Isaac was a worshiper. Jacob was a worshiper. Don't let your wealth stop you from being a worshiper. Come to church in your Rolls Royce, your mink coat, and come right in the house, pray to the dance of God. I remember one of the bishops was testifying on behalf of one of his members. He said she was, can I use the phrase, she bug wild. When it came to praising God. And he has a very large congregation, a few thousand numbers, you know. But he said, every service she'd be dancing and bucking and carrying on, you know. Like, like how do you be dancing? <laughs> he said, she'd just be going in, I mean, all up and down the aisle, just hollering and carrying on, shouting. He said, one of the members asked him, because, you know, when you're in a church so large, a lot of people don't know him. You know, they just see faces. So they want to know, you know, why is that sister always just shouting? She acts like she don't have no sense, just very disruptive. He said, oh, really? He said, that's what you think of her? You know, because they consider her unsophisticated and uncouth. But he had them know that she was a practicing attorney. But she didn't forget who got her her law license. <laughs> She may stand before the judge, but she knew who her judge was. And so she didn't have any problem praising God. See, these are folk that never saw her go outside in the parking lot. And I believe it was a Rolls Royce that she drove. They didn't see her when she left church, what kind of car she was driving. They just saw how she was acting inside the church. But she didn't let her stuff go to her head. She remembered the same God that blessed me with it could take it away from me. So I'm going to continue to praise him. Some of us get 50 cents over $2 and we lose our mind. <laughs> but if you really want to stay blessed, remember to praise the God who blessed you. And I don't care what you have, what's on your body, what you came to church in, what you live in, give God the praise. Some of us, we're saying, well, when God does this for me, I'm going to do this. When he does this, I'm going to do this. No, you do it before he does it and do it while he's doing it and do it after. Praise it before, during, and after. Never forget where your anchor is. Never forget. So I've never forgotten that testimony. Then I remember one pastor, one of the women pastors, beautiful church out east, Beautiful mink coat she would wear, nice diamond rings, but will preach you under the table. And they put her up to testify at one of the large conventions. And she says, I have a lot of young women who walk up to me and tell me, Mother, I want to be just like you. I want to be just like you. And she said, I have to tell you, dear hearts. She said, sweetie, you don't understand. You see the glory, but you don't know my story. They didn't know the abuse that she had taken on her way to work. They didn't know all the other things that she had to endure as a woman and a young wife that the Lord delivered her out of. And now she's able to stand before the people of God. So just because I look good doesn't mean that my life has always been good. So you thank God where you are right now. Amen. And don't let these clothes and these cars and this stuff, all this bling, don't let it fool you. Because there's a lot of folk that have the bling. Huh? Huh? They, they, they got the bling, but they don't have a king. And, and, and they don't understand 
And a lot of them have taken guns and pills and whatever to end their lives. If that stuff can truly make you happy and satisfied, that's not what does it. It's the anchor. Amen. It's the anchor that keeps you grounded and set. So that when you get your stuff, you don't lose your mind. Amen. Hmm. Am I saying it right? Amen. Let me tell you something. It's not ADT. It's not branch. It's not all these other law companies watching your house Amen. while you're at church. Amen. If God don't keep it, Amen. you can buy the dogs and the guns and all the stuff you want to to protect yourself. If Listen, they'll come in there and get your dog and your gun, have your dog eating out their hand. But God is the one who watches over us. And to God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Give him a hand, praise God. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. There's some things I'm waiting on. He said, well, Bishop, why don't you just go ahead and do it? Why don't you just go ahead and do it? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting. It may sound crazy, but I'm waiting. I ask God to do something for me so I can do something for the church. I want to get that done. When I get that done, I'm going to be all right. Does that make sense? Amen. I'm going to be all right. I want to get it done. Amen. I want to pay this church off. Amen. And if the Lord bless me with the money before he give it to y'all, I'm going to pay it off. Amen. Now, if he give it to you first, then you pay it off. Just come to me and say, Bishop, how much we owe? I'm going to tell you exactly how much. Amen. But if he give it to me first, I'm going to pay it off. Does that make sense? Amen. Less than $100,000? Yes. I'll pay it right off. Thank you, Lord. Pay it off. Pay it in full. It won't bother me a bit. Because, if, listen, there's going to be more where that. God said if he was hungry, he wouldn't tell us. When we get hungry, we'd be calling on him, don't we? But he said he wouldn't say nothing to us if he was hungry. He said the, not only is the cattle on a thousand hills his, the hills are his. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you all. So what's a car? What's a house? What's a new pair of shoes? That's nothing to God. That's nothing to Him. There's so much He can do. I may not look like I'm excited, but y'all just don't know. I actually broke out in tears earlier. I was sitting there just thinking about the goodness of God. See, I've been at death's door. See, some of y'all maybe have been there. I'm not talking about, I'm because of sickness. I've been at death's door twice in my life that I can remember. 1982 and 2011. At death's door. 2011 in a hospital. Had lost half the blood out of my body. But God. But God. Stop. The rupture and let the transfusion work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And didn't even know I was dying. But God. When they say He made old death behave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't y'all play with me. If you've been there, just raise your hands, Lord. I thank you. Cut you open. Something could have gone wrong in the operating room, but God. Car accidents. All kinds of things. But God. He has to 
keep his word. So you got to live. So he can fulfill his promise. Thank you, Lord. So I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. I bring my wife breakfast. She says, thank you. Sometimes I don't say anything. I'll Sometimes I'll say, yes, ma'am. She said, I said, thank you. I said, yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. I don't mean to keep you running up and down the stairs. But guess what? I'm glad I'm able to run up and down the stairs. We both could be in a wheelchair somewhere. That don't work for that side. I told them when we get old, I'm going to get one of them little things that the Lord chair and go up the stairs and, and then go around the other side. Stair lift I'm going to get one of those. But I still got to walk to the chair. And I'm going to thank God for the strength to do that. But while I'm able, I don't mind taking care of her while I'm able. Let me do what I'm supposed to do. Amen. It could be the other way around. And I believe that she do the best to take care of me. So since it's my turn, thank God I can cook. Thank God I can do some cleaning. Thank God I know how to use the washing machine. See, I mean, just simple stuff. They're folk that don't know how to do simple stuff. So thank God I'm able. Why complain? about how much you have to do, just thank God you're able, because it could be, you know, and we need to stop saying what we're tired of doing, I'm tired of this, but God can put you in a situation where you can do none of it. So I would rather just go ahead on and do what I can do, while I can do it, until somebody else come along. Thank God I'm able. Thank God for the strength. And don't complain. It's going to work out all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Just say, Lord, keep my mind focused on you. Lord, keep my mind stayed on you. God ain't going to heal us to get into some foolishness. So, so while some of us are down and going through what we're doing, get all that crazy stuff out your mind. Get all that foolishness out your mind. Make sure that you don't have no strange thoughts and strange intents. So that when he bring you all the way out, you can get about the business of the king. Amen. Give the Lord another hand praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Again, we're glad to have Mother Watt back. Thank you. God bless you, Mother. God bless you, Mother. God bless you. I, I know you danced at home a little bit, but didn't it feel different here? Just a different environment. She, she was all out of the aisle. Acting unseen. Acting unseen. Thank you, Lord. But she had a right. She had a right to dance. Bring your shout shoes. I don't know what you can do or not. Bring your dancing shoes. Run around this church. I, you can run around this church. I know you can do that, right? Let's go ahead and take a run real quick. Yeah, go ahead and run around. <laughs>
80. I'm looking forward to that day. Let me knock 60 out. Then I'm gonna come after 70 with guns blazing. And then 80, here I come. I figured my mama and daddy both made it to 80. All the better to get some of it. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. They lived a combined 100 and, oh my goodness. What's, 80 and 90 is 170, right? So 175 years together. Yeah, that was the age of Abraham, I believe. Yeah. So I'll be able to get some of that. Talk to me, somebody. Don't, don't let the devil tell you, you know, you get ready to die. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. First off, you already know it's a lie, because all he can do is lie. God can't lie, but all he does is lie. So those of you on our live stream, God bless you. We're praying for you. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to be a part of this service. And we pray the greatest choice blessings of God be upon your life. And if there's anybody that you want us to pray for over the next 20, 30 seconds, come on and type those names in real quick. And we're going to partner with you in prayer for them. We appreciate all gifts and donations to the church and to the ministry. But most of all, we pray your help and strength in the Lord. In Jesus.